Hello and welcome. My name is Melinda Gilliam. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a career coach with the Career and Internship Center on the University of Washington Seattle campus. I am so excited to share this content with you today. This is Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Assessing an Employer's Commitment. As we begin our presentation, we'll start with the land acknowledgement. The University of Washington acknowledges the Coast Salish peoples of this land, the land which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. There are three main drivers or three points of purpose for this workshop. The first is to bring intentionality to the job search process while embracing your whole self, which of course includes your identity and affiliations. Second, to empower job seekers by building navigational capital, so your ability to traverse your career journey and move forward. And finally, to cultivate agency and confidence in career development that will continue to benefit job seekers throughout their journey. So, while we're focusing on planning for maybe next steps, what you'll learn in this, this presentation will be valuable to you and helpful to you as you traverse the rest of your career journey years from now as well. We'll begin with talking about the dimensions of diversity or the dimensions of identity. So on the screen, we have a picture where we have a circle with a couple criteria in the middle and then outside of that, um, we have a couple additional criteria. So the inner circle, those are considered to be the primary dimensions of identity. And those include spiritual beliefs, class, gender, age, physical and cognitive abilities, ethnicity, race, income, and sexuality. These are considered to be the core of an individual's identity. They're impactful in shaping their values and their perception of others. Outside of that center circle, these are the secondary dimensions of identity. These are characteristics of oneself and or affiliations. So the ones that are listed on the screen, and it's certainly not limited to these, but work experience, communication style, political beliefs, military affiliation, geographic location, organization role and level, work style, first language, and family status. Amongst all of these identities and affiliations, there's a factor that some might be visible while others might not be visible upon first, first meeting someone or interacting with them. And within that, there's choice. Um, you can choose what you want to share. You can choose whether or not you elaborate on something that's visible, so on and so forth. But ultimately setting boundaries and what you're sharing and what you're comfortable sharing will allow you to maintain the most agency of your experience. I always like to say your identity is yours. It's called an identity. I get to decide uh, the way that I share, the way that I experience, um, you know, all those pieces. So really keeping yourself centered in your own identity, affiliations, and experience. You are not required to share these elements. Um, there, there's opportunity, certainly, if it feels salient to you throughout your job search or your career journey. Um, but generally, it's not a required component to share these pieces. Okay, as you prepare for the job search, there are a couple steps that you'll want to consider. The first of which is reflect. In the process of reflecting, we encourage you to brainstorm what you need to feel supported in your identity and in general. So within the identities I hold, I might think about what helps me feel the most supported or when I encounter challenge, what is a resource or a support that I look to or you know, proactively, where do I find um, supports or opportunities to be energizing. So for example, in my own experience, I can give the fact that if, uh, affiliation or identity groups, affinity groups allow me to feel connected to others who share in my experience, which allows me not to have to explain my experience often and I can find community quite quickly. Um, so that is a, is a component of what I would look for in my own opportunity. So you really wanna go through this process of understanding yourself and what you need. So that can help guide your search and inform your decisions. Next, you can make a list of companies you'd be energized to work with. Um, maybe you know of some companies right off the top of your mind, um, or maybe you don't know of some yet. And so really doing the searching and the identification of those companies, which we'll talk more about in just a moment. 
Now, once you create that list, it'll be important that you're looping back and maintaining it. So you want to prioritize. So for example, if, if um, I'll just throw out University of Washington, Google and Amazon, if those are three employers on your list, maybe they shift in the way that they're ranked and uh, based on what you learn about them and how that aligns with what you need and an experience. So really make your list, reflect, reorganize and prioritize um, accordingly. And if you feel stuck or if you don't have um, companies or organizations that you'd like to work with, you can take a look at the top places to work and begin brainstorming. And most um, job search boards or job search sites, career sites have some version of this. For example, Glassdoor has the top places to work that are supportive of diversity, equity, and inclusion, or you know, uh, LinkedIn might offer a list, something like that. So you can keep an eye out for those top places to work lists. As I've kind of alluded to, again, Glassdoor is one of those options for you to learn more about the company and know your worth. So Glassdoor not only has um, information about jobs or companies or organizations, they have reviews that are shared by employees who have experienced that organization. They also have insights to salary, uh, you name it. So it's a really good all-encompassing tool for understanding an organization. Um, Diversityjobs.com has, has an employer rankings by industry list and also some pro tips for navigating applicant tracking systems. Um, so if you're wanting some more logistical components and some understanding in that regard, diversity jobs might be your place to go. Uh, Chessy is similar to Glassdoor, uh, where it does provide anonymous career insights um, and it's a platform for diverse employees. However, uh, it's newer. So the amount of content that you'll find on Glassdoor versus Chessy, Glassdoor might be a little bit more in depth. However, again, Chessy is, is an option for you if you'd like to utilize that. So we went from reflect, we're now at the stage of research. So you have your list and you're getting ready to look more into your opportunities or organizations that you've identified for yourself. You can again use uh, resources such as Glassdoor or Chessy to look at the reputation of the employer. So to get an understanding of what people are saying, how the employer actually is experienced through work. You can also review the company's social media and see what they're sharing, who's represented, and who the company leaders are. So it's one thing if their values are posted on their website, that's wonderful, it provides great insight. And how can you assess how they're actualizing their values, how they're living up to it, in what ways their actions align to what they say they value. So social media is a nice uh, approachable way to kind of start to understand some of those things. Certainly some organizations are more present on social media than others. So it might not be the only way you're looking into understanding more. You can check out the company's website and any available reports that provide insight into the employee experience. So for example, I can toss out Google as, an, as a good example of this. They have a report, a diversity and inclusion report that shares their, uh, their assessment results for assessing different criteria of um, diversity, equity, and inclusion in their workplace. Um, it shares their findings of the results, their action planning, you name it. And so different organizations might have similar reports available on their website for you to look deeper into or get a better understanding of um, how they're actualizing their values related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Next, take note of any concerns from your research and make choices that align with your values. So for example, um, if you are researching an organization that you really are caring about, but you're starting to see some red flags. Maybe they're, they have some disputes against them or employees on Glassdoor are sharing how they found a particular challenge point or rub with the organization and the way that their identity has been experienced. That might serve as a red flag to you. If that's the case, you'll wanna note it. It might be that you make a decision based off that information, whether or not to continue your research or your engagement with that employer. Or it might be that you note it and as you move forward in a process of job searching or interviewing, you ask more about it and you learn more about it. At that point, you can then make more of a decision. So whatever feels right for you is ultimately the most important, um, but it's good to take note and to follow up if you do have concerns so you can feel confident in the way you move forward. Next, we move on from researching to connection. So to connect, there are a lot of different ways in which you can do so. You wanna consider hearing from multiple perspectives and you can do that by reaching out to multiple people. It can feel challenging to reach out to people. Uh, it can feel a little bit anxiety inducing for some or nerve wracking for others. 
Um, some people love it and that's wonderful too. Wherever you're at in that, um, just know that you can, you can do it. If you need support in doing that, we're here for you as career coaches. We can help you uh, craft messages, whether it's an email, a LinkedIn message. Um, we can talk with you and practice a conversation, whatever you might need, we're here to support you in doing that. The value of hearing from multiple perspectives is important because even though I might share an identity with somebody who says that their experience was not stellar, another employee might have a stellar experience. And so it's really important to get beyond just one person's perspective to understand all the different components that go into somebody to um, employees experiences. And certainly other people's experience might not be your own. So there's value in, in um, holding that as information, but not, not as rule. Um, you want to leverage connections where you have them. So that might be with alumni or current employees that you know within an industry or an organization. So if you're looking to get connected with alumni, you can do so in a lot of different ways through Handshake, which is one of the more familiar um, connection points for University of Washington students and alum. Um, you can go on there and search for alumni. UW Husky Landing is put on through the Alumni Association and connects you with alumni. Um, very straightforward there. And then LinkedIn also has an opportunity for you to go to the University of Washington page, click on their alumni tab. And then from there, you can search different criteria, whether it's the company or organization that somebody is working for or what they've studied, you name it. And so it can be a really great way to identify people to connect with. You wanna be prepared to ask questions that will get you the answers that you need. So we have a resource for informational interviewing that does a really good job of providing you with some questions that you might ask. If you're using a platform like Handshake, Handshake will also give you some suggestions or some templates to utilize. So this is a great way to scale. Um, if you are somebody who needs a little bit more support, you, there is support for you in multiple ways through resources we offer. Um, if you are wanting to come up with some questions that speak to your identity or allow for insight into identities you might hold as well, we're happy to workshop those with you. Um, for example, um, if you want to know what it's like, I asked this question about my own experience, but sometimes you might want to know what it's like to be a, a person of color working in the organization. And, you know, you, it's okay to ask those things. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get deeper into it. But you really want to identify the questions and the insights you're looking for and be transparent about what that is when you work with people who are alum or are providing you insight into the experience. Okay, shifting away from searching and getting into the interview components. You wanna to look to evaluate their word and action. So what this is saying is, is what they're conveying what you're experiencing or observing? So if the company says that they value um, inclusion and they're saying that they do that through inclusive language, but you get into an interview and you're noticing the language that they're utilizing is not inclusive, that might be concerning to you. You might, you might experience that as a mismatch. And so really understanding what you can expect and then assessing that through your own experience of the interview. You wanna note the thoughtfulness, rigor, honesty, and authenticity of the questions and responses in the interview. So for example, if they're asking you questions that are assessing your commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, it might also signal that that's a value of theirs, right? That they care to know that. And then also you might be asking them questions and if they have, if they're prepared, if they're insightful, if they are honest and um, provide great insight and perspective into their own experiences and their identities, for example, that might show that they're more um, familiar with doing that in the workplace, that they're supported in doing so. So these might be cues as well. You wanna ask directly about diversity and inclusion along with how it's experienced in action. So an example of this might be, um, do people feel heard and valued in their experiences and identities and how, right? Can employees provide you insight and um, examples of how, what that looks like? So you can get a better understanding beyond words to actions. Next, you wanna learn more about the organization's leadership, what they prioritize and their ability to role model values related to inclusion. So if they are saying that their values are diversity, equity, and inclusion, but only certain people are role modeling those values, that also might be a concern. Um, so it's, it's good to understand what the expectations are for every level in the organization, how they make decisions, what they prioritize in making decisions. 
and their ability to role model that. So is it more than just what's written on their website? Is it what they're living? Some other things to remember. Your question should be a green flag to an inclusive employer. It will demonstrate your investment in the health and success of the organization and in your own experience, right? So if you're asking questions that help you get a better understanding of what it's like for somebody who might share your identities to engage in their workplace and feel support, that's how you're going to feel like you're most able to engage fully in the work that you're doing is when you're feeling supported and um, understood, welcomed for the identities and experiences and affiliations that you're bringing. So it's really, it should be a green flag. They should want to help you get that understanding. Every organization should have a business case for diversity and inclusion. It should be formalized, intentional, and growing. So it's not a stagnant thing that we do once and move on from. It doesn't exist separate from the other components of the work or that the organization does. It should be incorporated everywhere. They should be using assessment and they should be planning based on what they understand. They should be striving for promising practices in the way of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And they should be committed with financial resources, with people power, you name it. Organizations that are aware of the concrete benefits that diversity and inclusion provide are much more likely to promote it. So again, if they're shying away from it or they're kind of skirting around the questions you're asking and they're not able to answer it, uh, these might be moments in where you're asking about that. You're trying to understand more about what that means because that might signal that they're not embodying those things or they aren't true values of the organization. Okay, let's talk more about finding your community. You can do that, of course, while you're here as a University of Washington student, but certainly you'll want to do that throughout your life and in the workplace for some people. Looking for community and shared identity, um, you can find that through uh, identity and affiliation in different ways, depending on the organization. But no matter what, for a lot of people, they find value in building those connections and the way that they um, relate to people through shared identity and affiliation. Some examples of where this is being done currently, Bain and Company offers affinity groups to provide additional connection and support through coaching, mentoring, and professional development. So you'll notice here, they're not just saying, this organization is not just saying, sure, we have support for people getting together on shared experience and identity. That is an element of this, but they're also saying we're intentionally supporting this through coaching, mentoring, and professional development. So they are showing a level of elevated investment in the experience and ensuring that they're differentiating the, the support and resources available for people who hold these identities. Next, LinkedIn offers 10 ERGs, which are employee resource groups that build and strengthen communities and develop the next generation of LinkedIn leaders. So again, that shows that investment in developing the next generation. They are looking to funnel support, resources, time, investment into um, identities and affiliation specific groups. And then finally here, Microsoft offers community development through nine employee resource groups under the belief that our different experiences connect us. So acknowledging the fact that these these identities, these affiliations do make us different. We need different things, we have different experiences. However, by supporting that, acknowledging it and honoring it, we will strengthen, right? So it really shows that nuanced understanding of identity and affiliation. Okay, now um, for your community, um, finding that here, you can do that through our interest in identity affiliation communities. Interests are on the left side of the page. They include arts, media, marketing, consulting, business, health, law, nonprofit, uh, physical and life science, sustainability, tech, data, gaming, you name it. Uh, that's not necessarily what we're talking about today in our presentation. However, they exist through our website. So please feel free to connect in that way. What we're really focusing on are the identity and affiliations noted on the right side of the slide. And those are first generation students, students of color, LGBTQ plus students, undocumented and DACA students, transfer students, students with disabilities, international students and student veterans. And these are all identity and affiliation communities that are hosted through our website. We provide connection to uh, RSOs, to um, different resources, blogs, you name it, depending on the community. And if you do not see a community up here that you feel represents you, 
we are happy to support you as well. Um, we have on our website this snapshot along with a paragraph providing insight about how we can support you in finding connection. So certainly would encourage you to reach out to us as career coaches or reach out to our center directly and we're happy to provide that service. Couple of things to remember, socially just practices and recruitment and retention are responsibilities of every employer. So we've spent the last 20 or so minutes going through this content and really helping you find agency and understanding and assessing an employer's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that's only one piece of the puzzle, right? The, the responsibility of recruitment and retention and socially just practices in both are the responsibility of the employer. So really we, we back that as the Career and Internship Center. And we are committed to sharing equitable hiring as well as onboarding and retention practices with employers. We just recently launched a component of our website that provides insight into how we're doing that and provides employers with resources and supports for developing in the areas of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Okay, so as we near the end of our content here, um, there are a couple next step points that I wanna highlight and then I'll pop over and show you how to get connected with more resources. So there are webinars very similar to this one in the area of job seeking or resumes or interviews or whatever you need. And we have a number of webinars that you can access live or through our website. We have career fairs that happen quite often. Um, some are specifically focused on certain industry areas while others are more broad. You can meet with any of our coaches, such as myself, by appointment. You register for that through Handshake. And so if you're interested, we're happy to welcome you and support you. And then finally, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Assessing an Employer's Commitment handout, which recaps a lot of this information in brief form, which I'll show you. So those are our next steps. Let me go ahead and get our screen pulled up. So the way that you can access more of these resources is by going to our website, which is careers.uw.edu. Once you are there, going to the DIY resources tab, stands for do-it-yourself resources, and then moving down to the find success bullet point. Once you are on that page, there's an option for a dropdown and clicking jobs. Here's where you'll find a lot of information about job search, whether it's quick informational videos, recorded webinars, um, featured classes, featured resources, they are all here. So if you are interested in finding this information, feel free to do so. Um, one of the resources on here is diversity, equity, and inclusion, how to assess an employer's commitment. Um, so this resource, again, recaps a lot of the information. It has a number of links. So for example, to the Google diversity report that I had mentioned, um, to Glassdoor or Chezzy, the best places to work list, you name it, this resource has it. Um, so feel free, again, to access this if it's helpful to you. Another piece that I wanted to show you, if you go back up to the top of our website, there's the ribbon that says identity, interest in identity resources. The pop down gives you all of the identity communities where you can click onto. I'll click the students of color to do an example. As I scroll down, you'll find information, relevant articles, you'll find um, different blog posts, uh, you'll also find recorded webinars, um, student organizations, featured resources, you name it. So we have a ton of information available to you for you to utilize as helpful. Okay. That is the end of our content. I want to thank you all so much uh, for being engaged. We are happy to, again, answer any questions that you have. And I look forward to supporting you along the way as you feel would be helpful. Thank you again.